Hi everybody, my name is Raymond Camden, and in this video I'm going to give you a quick introduction to going serverless with OpenWhisk. Now if you don't know what serverless means, or maybe you've heard of it but don't really grok what it's actually doing, uh, it basically boils down to the ability to write code for your application in small atomic chunks without having to bind them to a web server or even worry about a web server. So as an example, uh, imagine in Node, I want to build an API to tell the time. To actually make that available, I set up a server using Express, for example, and then I pick a particular URL path and a particular URL method, and then I set it up so that it runs the code to get the current time. With serverless, all I do is write the code for the particular business logic, and in our case, get the time. The framework itself can handle how that's exposed. So it can handle setting up the path and the method or uh, exposing that logic via other methods as well. But essentially what it means to me is that I am just focused on writing the business logic, not any of the stuff around it to make it available. I think this is extremely fascinating. I don't necessarily think it'll be applicable to every situation out there, but when I look at a lot of the things that I've built in Node and other technologies, I could have replaced them with something like OpenWhisk. It would have made my life a bit simpler and uh, allowed me to get you know, what I was trying to do done even quicker. So I'm really excited about it. And in this video, I'm going to just show you a quick introduction to working with it. So to begin, you're going to need the CLI. And before you get the CLI, you'll have to sign up for Bluemix. Bluemix is IBM's platform as a service solution. It's totally free. It's a painless process. Uh, but once you sign up, you'll come back to this URL and you can see it on screen there. I will include it in the video notes as well. Uh, but once you've signed up and logged in, you can download the CLI and they support multiple platforms. I'm doing this on the Mac. Uh, but I've also done this on Windows. Once you've done that, there's a one-time process to pass some authorization data. And you can see here, if I was logged in, uh, I would actually have a command that I can literally just copy and paste. And again, it's a one-time operation. And that tells the command line basically how to work with my space. So once I've installed that command line, I can see it in action by typing WSK, like so. So let's get started and actually build something. So in OpenWhisk, our business logic, like the example I gave with getting the time, would be considered <clears throat> would be considered an action. So let's create an action in JavaScript. I could also use Swift or Java or other languages, but I love JavaScript, so we'll use JavaScript. So by convention, you want a function called main. You could have other functions in there, but OpenWhisk is gonna look for main uh, for the entry point into your action. I also have to return an object, but what's in that object is totally up to me. So I'm just gonna return a result and a simple string meow. And that's it. I'm going to save it as action1.js. And there I have my file, but I need to deploy this to OpenWhisk. I'll go back to my command line and do WSK action create. I'll give it a name. It does not have to match the file name, uh, but I find it makes it a bit easier to keep track of what file is working with what action. So I'll call the action, action one, and I'll give it the file name and boom, that's it, done. So how do I actually run this action? WSK action invoke and then the action name and boom it fired. So where is my result? Well it kind of fired asynchronously so I need to actually get that result. Notice the command line gave me an ID. This is an activation ID. Essentially my action created an activation and if I want to get that particular result WSK activation, activation, get, and then just copy and paste that ID, like so. And we can see my result. Now it's a, quite a bit bigger than what you saw in the JavaScript code because you have all this metadata about the particular action. You can see how long it took, 
Uh, you can see the actual result right there <clears throat> and more metadata as well. So how do we update this? So I'm gonna go back to my code and make my cat a bit more chill and get rid of the exclamation mark, save it. Go back to the command line and simply type WSK action update and then the action name and the action file if I can type right. And that's it. Now I'm gonna run this again, uh, but this time I actually want to wait for the response. Instead of actually getting the ID, uh, the activation ID and looking it up. Luckily that's pretty easy. I'm gonna write my action evoke and my action name and just add blocking to the end. And there we go, I get the response immediately and you can see Meow now doesn't have the exclamation mark. Uh, so it's been updated. So let's make this a bit more complex and add some parameters. So I can add an argument called parameters and then modify my code to look for, in this case, params.name, name. And again, the parameters that I use are totally arbitrary. It's whatever makes sense for my business logic. So I'm gonna run this and we should see, oops, I didn't update. I'm gonna quickly update like so. All right, I've updated it. Now I'm gonna run it again with blocking. So I see the result immediately and it says meow undefined. So I have to actually pass that parameter in. How do we do that? We add a command line argument called param. We give it the name, in this case it's name, and the value will be Raymond. And now it runs and we see hello Raymond. And in case you're curious, you can also create a default uh, value for param. And that is by going to action update, give it the name, and simply say param name equals nameless. So now when I run my action without that parameter, and we'll try it like so, we should see a default value of nameless. And there it is. So that's it for this video. We worked with a really simple action. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to work with asynchronous actions.